Hello, you crazy church people, fun people, people I love, young people, old people, middle-aged people, you know, people that are working, people without work. We love you all. And if we can do anything for you, let us know. It's good to see you today. And I'm glad that you join me for this Old Man Weaver moment of a devotional thought. And so thank you so much. Hey, listen, uh, some good things coming up soon. We got our 30 year anniversary coming up. You'll be seeing more of that the first Sunday of October, that Friday night, right before that. If I remember the date, I believe it's October 2. I'm not positive. The first Friday of October, we're having a banquet and it's going to be what we're all about. Focus is our, our vision statement or what we looked at, what we focus on is heaven from set your affections on things above, not on the things of earth from Colossians chapter three. And then also, not just a vision of heaven, but the mission to go there and take as many with us as possible. I gave a word from God not long ago in church, and I want to remind you of that. Here's what it was, is that to get right with God, to stay right with God, and to don't be afraid. I want you to remember those, the most important words. Get right with God, stay right with God, and don't be afraid. Now, here's the thing. Some things that could scare you may come, but God will be with us. We may be martyred, like some people are being martyred in, in uh, uh, different countries around the world right now. Just like unbelievable things happening to Christians. In America, people are wanting to make the Bible hate speech. And uh, so uh, there is persecution against believers that believe the absolute authority of the Bible and believe in biblical morality. And they want to say, well, we're being mean or we're doing this because we believe this. And that's not true. Uh, it's actually very loving to tell the truth and to be do it in such a kind way and to teach someone what is right and what is wrong. And so let's, let's do the work of God. Number one, keep giving the gospel. Stand up from biblical truth and morality and do it in love. Do it in kindness. And let's be the church because our mission is to go to heaven and take as many people as possible with us. And so we have to stay on task, give the gospel, get right with God, stay right with God, and don't be afraid. And do the work of evangelists, do the ministry God's called you to, and listen to this, listen to this, seek God, turn from your sin, pray for your nation. In every nation around this world, so many nations need prayer. Wickedness in our culture is abounding like we've never seen before. And we need prayer, but we also need people to be confident, to be bold. Don't be so afraid. You don't need to be afraid. You hear me? So I, I looked up the definition. We've heard of the Beatitudes Jesus taught in Matthew 5 in the Sermon on the Mount at the beginning. I looked at what is Beatitudes just to make sure I was right. And basically, it's it's blessedness. It's how to be blessed. And so some of us can get wrong attitudes. We can get an attitude. We can have wrong attitudes. And our attitudes aren't biblical. And so what does he say? What our attitude should be? That we would be blessed. Blessed attitudes. Blessings from God that flow. And it talks about the first one is blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In other words, realizing spiritually you're bankrupt, repenting and saying, I can't do it. God help me. Come into me. You're the only one that can do it. Help me, Jesus. Today I need you. That's realizing that the spirit, the spirit man is in, impoverished. We're born into sin. And the only way to be blessed by God is to recognize it and do what? It says, blessed are the spirit of God, because yours is the kingdom of God. In other words, if you want to go to heaven, you want to be a part of the kingdom of God, you want to be saved, you got to cry out to God. That's the first one. The second one is blessed are those who mourn, they shall be comforted. That's when weeping shall endure for a night, the psalmist said, but joy comes in the morning. When you repent, there's tears of repentance. But then the Bible says that he comes and fills us. That mourning turns to joy. It turns to comfort because you turn from your wicked ways. And then blessed are, are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Boy, do we need gentleness today. And if you want to have influence, you can't hold truth with a, a, a rusty, uh, uh, serrated saw that you carelessly. It needs to be the word of God, like a, a, a real sharpened word of God, like a sharpened knife 
that, that cuts smoothly with the oil of the Spirit and cuts smoothly to do surgery on the hearts of people around you so that you can make a difference in their life. So blessed are the gentle. Be gentle with truth and gentle with people. Be kind. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. They'll be satisfied or filled. You know, we, we look everywhere else. You know, one of the good things in the blessing of COVID, you may tell what it is, a lot of our gods fell apart and it forced people who don't even believe in God to feel uncomfortable because our sports went away, our eating out went away, our, our movies went away, going bowling went away, so many things went away. And yeah, there might be agendas behind all that, but the point is, is that when you're left with nothing, when you have to sit at the table and be around your family, when you don't go entertain yourself so you don't have to think about the real issues of life, then maybe you wake up and pay attention to God and look at God. And that's what we need to do. Don't go back to your gods of this world. So blessed for those who hunger and thirst. I want you to thirst after the things of God that are right and righteous acts and righteous living for they'll be satisfied. They'll be filled. We need to be filled with God. Blessed are the merciful. They'll receive mercy. There's a lot of people. You, look, I pastor people that are spiritual giants. They're so disciplined. And I pastor people that are barely there. And it's hard. In this culture, it's hard. You know, and I'm not trying to insult anybody, but basically just doing the picture of people growing up. You got the toddlers. They need a lot of care. They need a lot of attention. You got even babies, you know, that, that they don't know right from wrong. They don't understand all the things. They don't have the same spiritual enlightenment. So could you be a little bit patient with us pastors as we reach over to the weak, and we reach over to the strong, we reach over to the fearful, we reach over to the non-fearful, that we're trying to love and pastor everybody? Could you help us with that? Because, I mean, I think Jesus is the one that says to be merciful if you want to have mercy. And I mean, tell you something. You're a pastor. You don't have mercy. You're in trouble. You're going to be in trouble. I don't want to judge anybody because listen, even pastors need mercy. You're blessed or, you know, you have a blessed life. Okay. Blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. In other words, what's your motive about your religion? Don't get religious like the Pharisees, like the, like the hypocrites did in the time of Jesus. Have a pure heart in everything you do. You'll see God someday. That's real religion. That's Christianity. That's relationship. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Are you a peacemaker or a troublemaker? Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. If you haven't been, get ready. It's coming. It's coming. It may not be this year. Maybe next year. It's coming. And you may lose friends because you stand up. But make sure you're not losing it because be, you're not losing friends because you're not a peacemaker. Make sure you're not losing friends because you're not gentle. Make sure that you lose because you're standing up with love, speaking the truth in love for what is right and for what is biblical. Morality doesn't change. Biblical truth doesn't change. It is all true. Not You can't pull out one page. If you're going to accept Jesus who died on the cross and you think you're going to go to heaven because that's what your path is, then don't throw out the rest of the book that Jesus affirmed. The moral code of God doesn't change and his truth doesn't change. The Bible abides forever. The word of God, Jesus said, abides forever. And it does abide forever. Over and over we see it. And then it says, not only those that are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, the kingdom of heaven is yours, but blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you, falsely say kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great. And in the same way, they persecuted the prophets that were before you. Let's be the salt of the earth, it says. Let's be the light of the world, it says next. Let me tell you something. I have a friend that doesn't even know it, but someone posted something used his picture, used his name, and I know it wasn't him because love believes the best. It doesn't jump to the negative. It doesn't jump to the filth of the world to believe something, but he has enemies against him. And I'm going to tell you something. They're trying to post things and trying to ruin him and it's people that hate him and they put stuff out there that's not true. And I'm going to tell you something. Why don't you believe, why don't you believe the best about everybody? Believe the best about everybody and love and support and understand that everybody has a different lens through filters through hurts, through pains, through past. Let's understand that. And let's walk absolutely with the word of God as truth and no compromise. But let's also walk with love and let's use wisdom. And let's be careful not to cast pearl out before swine, meaning wisdom and truth that someone's not ready to hear yet. But you don't care because you're the truthful one and you're just going to take and just slice them up, just beat them up because they need to hear it. And you're the one to tell it to them. 
That's not what God wants. He wants you to, to, to be use wisdom as when they're ready to grow that next step and help them grow, befriend them out of relationships, speak into their life, and grow them into the person that they need to be. Let's be the church, church. I love you. I'm old. Believe in me. I wouldn't do anything to hurt you. I'm excited about the future. We had a lot of people come to Jesus this past Sunday. If you didn't watch that sermon from our guest from Louisiana, it's one of the most powerful sermons you've ever heard. You get online and you watch church and you don't be afraid to come on out. We got it safe out here. When you're ready, you come. But like I said, we're going to be kind. Until you're ready, we support you. But be watching online and thank you for being faithful because we're helping our missionaries. We're helping people that need benevolence and we're able to continue to move forward without changing a thing with our church and our outreaches. In Jesus' name, I pray for you. Bless your people, God. Be with them, God. Fill them up. Let them hunger for thirst and righteousness, God. Fill them with your love and may they walk in your truth, God, and be strong in the face of persecution and get ready because the world hates us. They want to make the Bible hate speech. They want us to shut up about morality. They want us to shut up, but we're going to not shut up. We're going to love up and we're going to tell the truth and we're going to be smart about it and use wisdom and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Ha, ha, ha. It's good to see you.